Acetate remains the most popular material used in the construction of high quality frames. But are all acetate glasses the same? Well, no. And in this video, I'm going to be showcasing some of the world's best acetate frames and explaining what makes them better than the rest. So hi, I'm Robert, style and vision consultant here at the Spectacle Factory. And it's my job to pair you with your perfect pair of glasses. And if you're shopping for acetate glasses, this video is for you because I'm going to be comparing a Luxottica made Chanel pair of sunglasses against all of these brands sourced from all over the world. I'm going to be giving you a lesson in acetate, what it is, how it's made, what the differences are, the whole manufacturing process. And I think you're going to enjoy this one. So this video came about when I was asked to fit some new prescription lenses, Zeiss prescription lenses, into a client's own Chanel sunglass frame, which I'm happy to do. That's a service that we offer to clients all over the world. They post their frames to us from everywhere, from LA to Japan, for us to fit the best quality lenses, whether that's from Zeiss, Hoya, or whoever, often with custom tints. In this case, it's a relatively straightforward brown gradient tint, although these are adaptive sun technology, which will then darken further beyond that. But this video is not about that. This video is about frames. And whilst working on these Chanel glasses, it really occurred to me that most people who buy these kind of frames really don't know what makes a particular pair better quality than another pair. And hence, you would assume that buying something that's branded Chanel would be a really high quality product. That might be true in the world of handbags and clothes. Unfortunately, it's not true in the world of glasses. So Chanel are made, like many other brands, by a company called Luxottica. They have factories in Italy. This frame is stamped made in Italy. I will leave you to decide whether they are actually made in Italy. And that's all I'm going to say on that matter. Do your own research. But acetate comes from either China, Italy or Japan. Those are the three regions that actually produce acetate. It's a combination of wood pulp and cotton fibers, primarily cotton fibers, which due to its quite unique properties makes it a really good material for frame construction for a few reasons. Number one, it's very soft generally against the skin. Number two, it can be produced in so many different color combinations and varieties. Number three, it's very easily adjusted by heating the frames. That means that we can then curve the end tips around the ears or we can heat the lens rim to pop in your prescription lenses. And all of those things make acetate significantly better than injection molded plastic, which you can always instantly tell because it just feels like a toy because it is literally the same material that toys are made from. When you hold an injection molded frame, it's very clear right away that it's extremely plasticky. On the other end of the spectrum, as we are going to see, a super high end acetate frame is light years away from that. It's soft, it feels natural, it feels enjoyable to wear. And in the middle, you have frames like this. So as a comparison, Let's start with Gast. Gast are actually the glasses that I have on right now. And they are my absolute favorite value brand to recommend because for the price that Gast frames come in at, you cannot get better quality. And in fact, a lot of frames that cost twice as much as Gast, for example, are not even as good. Now, what would you look out for if you were trying to determine which of these frames is actually better? One thing is to touch and feel the surface of the material. The softer it feels to the touch with acetate, the better. And that is something that does take time and experience. Obviously as an optician, I've handled thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of frames over the years. And you do get used to feeling quality, touching and feeling the frames. But there are more obvious features, for example, like the edges of the frame. So if we look at the way that these frames are contoured, for example, take the gast, you see those really sharp edges? You see how well cornered that is? That shows extremely good attention to detail because to achieve that, you have to finish this frame by hand. And one of the main things that you pay for from a high quality frame to a lower quality frame is the amount of hand finishing involved. And by the way, let's compare that against the Chanel frame because you can see that those corners are just nowhere near as pronounced. And you see acetate is originally produced in huge sheets of material, like literally meters long. That sheet, when it's produced, 
will come out almost like a liquid. And within that liquid, there can be many different colors. That's how, for example, tortoiseshell is produced, a mixture of brown and yellows. But as we're going to see later on with, for example, this Chloe limited edition frame, which we're going to get to at the end of the video, you can also produce stunning color combinations like this with an almost marbled effect. And everything in between from black to midnight blue to crystal. Those sheets then divided into blocks of acetate and from each block of acetate, a frame will be constructed. Many frames on the market will be completely mass produced in that sense. So a machine will just cut frame after frame after frame after frame. It goes down an assembly line until it gets to you. Frames which are handmade, and this is actually stamped handmade. You can see it just there on the gas frame. So some or all of that process will be done by hand. And only by hand finishing a frame can you get features like that with the sharp edges that I mentioned. That's, that's only one feature and we're going to cover many more, but it's one example of where attention to detail can be higher on an independent brand than a mainstream brand. So I'm going to break down acetate frames into tiers. And in the C tier, I would put companies like Luxottica, Markelin, who make Tom Ford, for example, Marshawn, Safilo, all basically the mainstream companies because generally speaking, they are mass producing their frames. And you can always tell a mass produced acetate frame next to a hand finished acetate frame. Now, did you know that depending on the region that the acetate is produced, for example, China, Italy, or Japan, the amount of moisture in the acetate actually differs and the hardness of the acetate differs. What that means is that, for example, a Japanese acetate will lose maximum 2% of its moisture over time, as opposed to a Chinese or Italian made acetate frame, which can lose up to 10% of its moisture over time. And a great example of that is this Bulgari frame, again, produced by Luxottica. This is a five-year-old pair of glasses. And you can see, I hope you can see on this five-year-old pair of glasses, just how much the finish has actually deteriorated. You see, this originally was glossy. This should be just as glossy as the Chanel. But what we see along the top of the frame is that it's become almost matte. You see that? And especially where the frame touches the nose, this is going to affect the comfort quite a lot. You can see there that on the nose bridge, again, it's really, really dried out. So as a comparison, I brought a pair of my own Walter and Herbert glasses. This is the Churchill. And this is equally five years old. It might even be six years old now. And we see none of the same effect. If you see along the top of this frame, it's still super glossy and shiny. You see how it catches the light? Again, on the bridge, even those points where it's been touching my nose, super glossy and shiny still after five years of wear. And that just goes to show how important the acetate quality is in the lifespan of your glasses. You see, my philosophy is that if you buy a good pair of frames, it should last you many years. It's not a disposable item. This is a disposable item. After five years, it looks shabby, it looks awful, and it won't be anywhere near as comfortable to wear as it should be. You can really see that lack of finishing on the frame compared against the Churchill. You see how glossy that is compared to how that is just really basic and matte. So when you're assessing the value of a pair of glasses, it's really important to consider the origin of the frame, the quality of the acetate that it was made from. The Walter and Herbert range are made in England using Italian acetate. And I would class brands like Walter and Herbert and Gast in the B tier of acetate frames. So very good, not the best, but very good and definitely worth purchasing. You'll tend to find frames like this in the two to $300 range on average. And I would also put brands like Oliver Peoples, Cutler and Gross, Garrett Light in that same category as well. What about if you want an A tier frame? Well, I have three examples to show you and it's amazing to see how different each of these are. Let's take Barton Pereira, arguably the best quality acetate frames in the world. This frame is the Domino and it's produced in a color called Matte Midnight. And I've said so many times on this channel how much I love Matte Midnight. I think it's one of the best frame colorways ever created. It's a custom acetate created for Barton Pereira. So that's another difference. The companies that actually produce sheets of acetate, as I mentioned, many of those sheets will actually be sold to many different companies. So you might find that brand X is making the same color frames as brand Y. And you'll see a lot of these same kind of tortoise shells. But the best frame manufacturers in the world will actually commission 
the acetate producers to produce an acetate that is solely for them. And Matte Midnight is one example of that. It's a beautiful, absolutely stunning colorway. The way that this catches the light while not being glossy, it's got that lovely matte finish, deliberately matte rather than the Bulgari glasses. And it's just easy to see why this is super popular because it's very wearable, it's a great color, but it's just so different than your normal tortoise shell or black frames. But what I really want to draw your attention to with Barton Pereira is the beveling around the edge of the frame. These little small details could only be made by a Japanese factory. And the best glasses in the world, at least the best acetate frames in the world, are produced in Japan. I hope you can see the edging of the frame. We have almost like a double bevel. You see the way that the frame curves to about here and then has a separate curve from here to here to on the corner of the frame. You can really catch it in the light there. That kind of sculpting, it might seem like a small detail, but when someone sees you from that angle and sees the frame on, they won't know what they're seeing, but they know that they're seeing a very sharp pair of glasses, something that has been perfectly finished. So again, when you compare the contours of these two frames, there's a world of difference. From the Chanel, where it's just got a single curve to the end, very simple level of finishing, compared against the Barton Pereira, where it's got two layers of curvature. They are quality, and when you wear them, the softness of the acetate really speaks for itself. You'll know as soon as you put this frame on how much better it is than this frame. I mean, wow, like I didn't even expect it to be that much myself. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it, there's an entire planet of difference, trust me. When you compare that against, for example, Robert LaRoche and the things that they're doing with their acetate frames, that's something really special because what you'll see is that the lens here is actually countersunk into the frame. What that means is that we actually have an inward bevel. So the lens is contoured and seated deep into the acetate. That gives these a beautiful amount of three-dimensionality. And of course, this frame, which is the Amanda, definitely won't suit me. It's a very, very feminine, very overtly lady style, but I will wear it for you just to show you how it looks. This is a super glossy black acetate. And I think there is something to be said for a really good black acetate. You see the polishing on that frame. The way that catches the light, you see how glossy it is. That is incredible finishing on that state frame. There are very few brands in the world that polish their frames to this level. LAI Works and Barton Pereira, definitely in that A tier. And when you wear a frame like this, it has so much presence, just because of the quality of the finishing, as well as the shape, of course, which is very dramatic and cool. And again, when you compare that level of polishing, if we catch the light on these two frames in the same, at the same time, you just see how much more glossy the Robert LaRoche is. Like I can catch that Chanel in the light, but it never just shines as brightly as the Robert LaRoche. Look how glossy that is on the temple as well. Beautiful. These little details do make a difference to how you are portrayed to other people around you. You might not think it's such a big deal, but it really does speak to your attention to detail as an individual, the attention to detail when you choose your eyewear. Trust me. The last pair that I have to show you today is, in my opinion, the best level of quality of acetate in the world. I really think over the last year, LAI works have won me over. I used to think that Barton Pereira were the best in the world. And I think I still think they're amazing, just as Robert LaRoche and Jack Marie Marge are. But by the way, Robert LaRoche are the only, I would say, A category Italian made acetate frames. But LAI works are just a whole other level. They call their acetates HD acetate. And you can really see why. Every single line on this crystal frame is perfect. It's sharp. It's accurate. It's precise. Look at the level of finishing there. Look how sharp it is. This is the Roswell, by the way. A fairly ordinary, simple rectangular shape, which is very unlike LAI works to do. But the crystal, or kind of smoky purple crystal, makes it a beautiful style nonetheless. And not just that color, but the finishing. I mean, when you see that on camera, close up, compared to the Chanel, <laughs> there is just zero comparison. You can really see why that is called a HD acetate. It does seem to stand out in HD. It seems to like pop out of the camera. 
So it's a generally good rule of thumb if you're looking for the best acetate frames to look for made in Japan, like you see with Barton Pereira, LAI Works, Jack Marie Marge, for example. But there are some really good Italian made acetate frames out there as well, as Robert LaRoche had proved. The final pair I've got to show you is kind of a bonus because I will soon be showcasing this new collection from Chloe. Remember that I mentioned that acetate frames are cut out of blocks of material. Well, that is a very wasteful process, as you can imagine. Most of the block of material actually goes to waste. So what Kering have done, who produce Chloe frames, is they've taken all those off cuts of acetate, they've melted them down, and they've created new, unique acetate combinations from the waste material. That has resulted in a strictly limited edition series of frames because there's only so much material that they can use in beautiful bold shapes, which are just super, super special. For example, this is number 23 out of just 100. Now for a brand like Chloe to produce just 100 pieces is amazing in and of itself. And we have this entire collection, but only one of each model. I'll be showcasing the whole thing soon, but if you're interested in a pair from this collection, you need to act fast, get in touch with me because we've already started to sell them in the store. You can see here, it explains how this is crafted from a unique blend of recycled acetate, a great initiative. And I would like to see more designer brands doing things like that. Chloe, I've found, have always been more eco-conscious than other designer brands. We've seen bio-based materials from them before, for example. But Chloe and other acetate frames made by Kering, such as Gucci and Cartier, I would put in the B tier. Very, very good. Not necessarily the top level, but very, very good. Definitely above your normal designer brands that I mentioned in the C tier. And I'm not saying that every brand within each of those categories is equal. I'm just trying to give you a general overview of the levels of quality that you see in acetate frames. But what do you think? Could you tell the difference? Could you spot all those beautiful artistic touches that make these frames special? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give us a like and stick around, subscribe. We're building an amazing online community of eyewear enthusiasts and genuinely, it's so exciting. So I really want you to be along for the journey. If you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe now and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.